coastal systems are exposed to natural hazards su such as tropical and extratropical storms or slower processes such as coastal erosion. Sea level rise, or climate change induced sea level rise, is expected to exacerbate those hazards. Sea levels have been rising at meters during the, uh, the past hundred years and recently this the rate of the rise has accelerated. So we're now looking at a rise of around three millimeters per year. The impacts of sea level rise will include frequent and more intense flooding, coastal erosion, loss of lowlands and wetlands, and saltwater intrusion into aquifers. Changes in sea levels will influence the frequency and intensity of storm surges. It's important here to introduce the concept of return period which is a probability that an event, a storm in this case, of a certain magnitude will be equaled or exceeded within a period of uh, 100 years, for example. So the 100-year storm is a storm that happens on average once every 100 years and therefore has a 1% probability of happening any year. How will sea level rise impact the return periods? As you can see from, the, from this graph, a rise in sea levels will displace storm surges by a certain amount upwards. So the surge, the 10-year storm surge, will in this case jump to the next level, which is the 100-year surge, at which these buildings or communities are experiencing flooding. Besides the changes in the frequency of storms, higher water levels will result in more intense storm flooding. Changes in storminess are at the moment not so well understood and therefore we cannot um, include these assumptions in our future uh, projections and assessments. For the coastal communities, risk is often estimated, calculated as the, as the product of probability of a certain event occurring and consequences on assets and, and population. Sea level rise will impact the probability of the hazard occurring, as we just discussed about the frequency of storm flooding, but consequences will depend not only on the frequency and intensity of flooding, but also on socioeconomic development. Simply put, more people in the floodplain and bringing more assets in the floodplain will result in higher consequences. Managing risk is therefore becoming essential when planning the future of coastal uh, zones. Adaptation is classified in three main types. and We have uh, protection either through technical uh, hard protection through dikes, for example, or soft protection through beach nourishment. We have accommodation where people, for example, build their house on pilings or simply take precautions at household level by installing floodgates or simply by moving their valuables on upper floors. And we have retreats, managed or planned retreat or uh, not managed retreat, where people simply leave from the area at risk. Adaptation is therefore becoming an essential aspect of managing risk. The concept of coastal system comes in here again. We have climatic and non-climatic drivers that influence coastal systems and interact with each other. Adaptation responses can reduce these impacts. It's important when planning adaptation to think that we need to plan in advance for an uncertain future, as we're still unsure about the extent of sea level rise. This is due to uncertainties in socioeconomic development, but also uncertainties regarding the response of the ocean to warming. It is important, therefore, that we look at the coast as a system and try to address uh, uncertainties through flexible management plans, such as adaptive management or adaptation pathways, which give a more flexible approach towards adaptation planning. And can reduce risk with smaller measures that we can, in the process, change when more knowledge regarding extreme events or sea level rise become, uh, becomes available.